Hello and welcome to Morton's Corner. This Morton's Corner will be about how to use ClipLearn with virtual machines and also Mac with Parallels Desktop. So in the scope of today, we'll uh, start off by talking a little bit about uh, Microsoft Hyper-V. Um, then we'll shortly discuss Citrix. Um, then we'll talk about how to use Mac with Parallels Desktop. And then we'll go into some uh, best practices and typical use cases. And then we'll talk a little bit about support scope because uh, the support scope for these kind of products with ClickLearn is a little bit different, right? So uh, to start us off, let's talk a little bit about um, Hyper-V or just on local hypervisor on your own machine. So what you'll typically do is that you'll uh, you'll come to your start menu and you'll just type Hyper-V. If it's not enabled, you won't see it in the list. Instead, you will see this. You'll see this popping up. Turn Windows features on and off. Click on that and you'll see Hyper-V right here. I just enable all of it. Um, I believe if you enable this, it will enable all four of them, right? Um, so yeah, go ahead and do that. Next thing you want to check um, is that you have virtualization enabled. You may need your local IT to do this if you don't have, uh, if you do, if you're not allowed to access your own BIOS in your PC, for example. So come down here, click on your task manager, and go to performance, and then you'll see whether or not virtualization is enabled. If virtualization is not enabled, you'll have a pretty poor experience uh, with the performance. So I'd recommend you enable it. All modern processors support this. So what you want to look for, if you have an Intel-based CPU, you want to look for VTD or virtualization in the BIOS. And if you have an AMD, you want to look for IMMU or IMO or whatever it's called. Um, go look for that and enable it. So. What you can then do is just come down to start, open your Hyper-V manager, and then you'll see all your virtual machines. Creating it is quite easy. You just go click create. And um, I'd recommend you download a uh, Windows installation from, uh, from Microsoft. But otherwise, of course, you can just uh, take your chances with whatever they present. So I have an Attain uh, version here. I'll just uh, double click on that. That's gonna start it up on another screen, so I'll just pull it over here. Yeah? Click on start, continue. That's granted you have already installed it. And loads for a little bit, and then you have your Windows machine. That's how fast it goes. So, here I then have a virtual desktop uh, with ClickLearn. So the cool thing about running ClickLearn in a virtual desktop like this, is that you can, um, for example, if you do replays and stuff, I can make click on do its replay. Uh, it's gonna, you know, click around the system, follow my process and stuff, and I can do something else on my own PC. Meanwhile, you know, check my mails, uh, type some Teams messages or whatever. Um, another uh, another purpose of using virtual machine could be that you have, um, if you have an extreme secure system uh, on your corporate environment where it's super locked down and you're not allowed to do anything or you have issues getting some aspects of ClickLearn to run, um, you could also use a virtual machine to just, you know, if if you're completely forced to get a new PC or format your PC to make ClickLearn work, for example, you can uh, you can use virtual machine um, in, the, in, in the interim, for example. Uh, you can also use it for the purpose I just described, which is uh, an you know, uninterrupted process. You know, you can kind of leave this on the other screen over here, uh, leave the replay running and do something else your main monitor, kind of keep an eye on what's going on. Um, so, uh, so, so that's definitely doable. Personally, I use this Attain here. I use it to test other click on versions. Um, I use it to test our beta versions. I use it to test our, um, uh, our on-premise versions. Um, I have an on-premise uh, project going on here. So, so that's pretty much how it goes. Uh, setting up the virtual machine itself, um, you may want to consult your local IT, uh, but of course, uh, give it some memory. Um, you specify the memory up here. 
you cannot do the wise running, which is fair. So uh, give it some memory, it will not completely starve your own PC, but not make this one suffer either. Um, and just give it a, a fair range of processes. So the official, um, I think the official guidelines is a dual core. I would recommend at least four uh, for Clickler. So set four cores um, and then give it at least eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, you can you can set it dynamically allowed to say how much is allowed to use, right? So, yeah, that is uh, that's clicking on a virtual machine, and of course you can spin up one other one. You know, you can have as many as running as you want. I sometimes have I don't know, four, five, six different virtual machines running at the same time, doing different stuff. So yeah, there you have it. So, briefly discussing Citrix. When you use ClickLearn with Citrix, um, typically your uh, IT will set up a, a Citrix farm with a Citrix server where you log in with a you know a little Citrix icon and stuff. But the way they need to install ClickLearn is a little bit different. So when you do a Citrix server, you have to specify like which folders are allowed for what users. Um, they will need typically they're not allowed to run Click once. It might be I mean not work. Um, then you would probably need your um, your click uh, sorry your MSI installation right. So if you go to your portal, I'm just gonna log in here. Once you've logged into your portal, you can go down here to um, to releases. In releases, you'll find all our products. You'll find the assist MSI. You'll find the click on console, and you'll find the attain MSI. So what your local IT will need to do is download the Attain MSI. When you click on this, it will compile a specific um, a specific ClickLearn version just for you with your connectors using your license and everything. So they can come in here, click on this. It will then generate a package. It's basically compiling it. Um, once it's compiled, you'll see this little bell go off. Um, or you just wait a few minutes and you click it again. So it's still prepping, it's not ready. That's why it's popping up again. So once it's ready, you just click on this. What the IT will typically do is that they'll then package this and deploy it via SCCM or um, whichever other uh, software deployment method uh, or mechanism you may have. Um, another thing you need to do in Citrix is you need to make available this folder called, just enable hitting folder here so you can see it, um view show hidden folders all right so the one i may enable this folder here called program data and click learn this folder needs to be available on citrix to people because click on stores is licensed here but most importantly the native messaging host used for the web browser recordings like edge and chrome that is stored in here and people need to be able to execute this application when they start the browser as soon as you have the extension installed in your browser, click on another attempt to launch uh, this application. If you cannot launch it, you'll get the warning. You may have, may or may not have seen it. Um, so they need this folder available. Also, of course, they need execute permissions. You may need to set that in your security settings. Let's come into security, and you can add either you can add the specific user, um, which would be a little bit cumbersome on a uh, large infrastructure with a lot of users. Or you can just go and add the authenticated users group. That's what I've done. So that means any user with a username and password that authenticates with the with the system, they are allowed to modify the folder contents. Basically, they can they can they can write cache in here. They can update the configuration. They can update the nested messaging host if we update it, for example. Um, things like that. So that's how you configure it. Microsoft Edge Web View Two is also required if not already installed. It is typically not pre-installed on a Windows server. For the assistant, if you're using Citrix as an end user, so if your end users are using this to launch your business application and rely on the virtual assistant on Citrix, um, there are two ways to deploy it, right? So when you normally execute the assist, it will launch our click once version of the assist. Um, and it will then execute the assist XML file. Um, if users are not allowed to execute Linux once applications, or if it's a, uh, a very closed off Citrix environment, which is um, 
which is not allowed to access certain resources on the internet, for example, um, you may have issues with this. So then what you need to do is that you need to deploy the as system SI. You do it the exact same way, download it and deploy it. But this time you don't deploy it to, um, to the authoring computer, so the people who use ClickLearn to to use uh, to record your business processes, you want to record. You want to deploy to those, of course, but also to everyone else in the organization who will be using uh, your your ClickLearn enabled content for their for their learning, right? Um, so, yeah, you would download. <clears throat> Here you can see my little Studio version. If I did the assist, you would see the same thing, right? So they need to deploy that. Then when you produce your content you need to enable a specific flag. You need to tell ClickLearn, hey, we expect users to have the assist MSI installed rather than using the ClickLearn ones. That's, something you're, that's not something that your technical team does, that's something that you will have to do. So the way you do that is you come into ClickLearn, you open your project, and you go to your, um, you go to your settings, in the publishing template, you'll have a setting under the assist. This is only if you're gonna use the assist, right? If you don't use the assist, it, this does not apply to you. You just disable it, don't worry about it. But under advanced, you have something called uh, use assist application URE, URI. Basically, you need to enable that. This will then, when you then produce content from this project using the default template, which I'm changing now, the assist will expect to have the MSI installed. There's one more thing you need to do, and that is to have your IT package that registry file you see it down there. It's from apps.clickland.com forward slash classist.uri.reg. They need to deploy that to the machines as well. And basically, that's just a registry file that tells uh, ClickLearn that the assist is installed locally. So these two things you need to do if you're gonna use the on-premise MSI version of the assist, right? So basically the MSI deployed package um, that you'll need to do. This of course also goes if you are using ClickLearn on, uh, in general, on computers that do not have internet access, then it needs to run everything locally in, a, in an own uh, closed off environment, right? So those settings are important. So coming over to Mac, uh, we don't officially support Mac, but we do uh, it does work when you use Parallels. So when you use Parallels, you can totally use ClipLearn, no problem. There is one thing though. Computers, Mac computers, do not have two control keys. Um, and if they do, the two control keys are the same function. Um, so hardware-wise, it does not convert to the same layout as you have on Windows. So you can either use an external keyboard. That's one thing or you can use the control shift and move the mouse up to the top left corner when you stop the recording process or you can click too fast that will also stop it of course or we can use in my case here i'm using something called uh, carabiner elements so our uh our local <laughs> our local mac nerd he told me this which is awesome um basically this will allow you to uh, map specific keys to different functions. So what he did um, was that he gave me a script. So what he's done is that he's gave me a script. Uh, once you've installed it, you come down here to complex modifications. You click on add your own rule. Uh, and then I have, uh, I have the script here, which basically I've called it click on record a stop. And basically what it does is that when you click shift F4, the left shift specifically, it will be the same as clicking the left and right control key, right? As you normally know how we stop the click and recording process. Um, I'll leave the links for this stuff in the, on the community. Um, I'm not endorsing this program at all. It was just an option that is, uh, that is available. Um, so when you come into to Windows 11 here, then you have uh, ClickLearn right here. And you can launch this just as you know uh, on a Windows PC, right? You just go install it, um, either using the ClickOnce or the MSI, whatever you prefer. Uh, so, so that's how it works. 
And um, yeah, the cool thing is you can just switch back and forth if you uh, if you so please. So coming into a project here. Let's go ahead and record something. So you can see the stopping power of Carabiner. I'll make a new recording. We can just call that test. And we'll see our normal click on recording panel cut off. I'll put it on automatic. It's just more convenient for this purpose. And then we can record. So I can click on edge here. Let me click on Chrome here. So when I want to stop it, I'm going to click Shift F4. And that will then stop the recording process. I don't need to um, I don't need to do the, the mouse move, for example, and I don't need to ex add an external keyboard to hold the two control keys. So uh, it just it just works. And yeah, that is super nice. Um, the cool thing about using the Mac 2, of course, is I can use it at the same way as a virtual machine if I wanted to, because it is a virtual machine. I can um, enable my replay, for example, or whatever other, my APT test, for example, and I can just pop back over to Mac and work here, right? So that's pretty much how that works. So coming a little bit back around to um, best practices and uh, typical use cases. Most of the typical use cases I've gone through during the presentation. Um, best practices. This is just an alternate way of using ClickLearn, um, either if you don't have another option or if you would like to uh, to just explore using it in a different manner, right? If you want to have a bit more freedom while you record and replay, for example, um, or if you're just a little nerdy and want to mess around, you can totally do that. Or if you have um, if you have a Mac and you would like to just uh, record some ClickLearn stuff on that too, um, could be a reason. So support scope wise, um, we can of course help you with guidelines on how you should install ClickLearn, um, which how you get the packages you need to deploy, but the deployment itself, uh, the packaging of these things, incorporating uh, the, the registry file in, in one package that you run, we can't really assist with that stuff. We are ClickLearn experts. We are not infrastructure experts in any way. Um, so, for example, I would often recommend people, they ask me, how often should we update the MSI? Well, we update around every two to three weeks, right? So if every two weeks um, you have an automatic script, downloads the package, deploys it, um, packages it, and deploys it to your SSCM server, and then either pushes it to people's PC or just makes it available so people can download it themselves when they want to, right? Um, you can totally do that. That's fine. But I mean, I cannot help you build that script or anything like that. I know that you could use tools like Power Automate to automate the process of downloading it, for example. Um, but I mean, your internal IT will probably have some better ideas and, and much more advanced tools to use um, than whatever homebrew stuff I come up with. So for the support scope, um, of course, we will help you as fast as we can um, with getting the software to run like this. Uh, but our support scope is within ClickLearn and it's recording, right? So we don't officially support Mac, for example. Uh, we, can, we can recommend you can run it via Palace, but if you cannot get it to work or something like that, uh, we may be ill-equipped to help you, but of course we'll do the best we can. Um, so, so yeah, that's it. But yeah, wrapping things up. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you found it useful. Uh, and uh, as always, if you have any comments, any requests, whatever, just leave them on the community, and we'll take it from there. Thank you.